what he says he intends to do. And when he turns around and says, Jen, to, you know, like the head of this uh, network or other people uh, who are critics that he intends to use SEAL Team 6 or the military within which to round up his critics or his opponents, he intends to do it. And I say that with firsthand experience. What do you think happens to you if he wins? Well, I'm out of here. I mean, I'm already working on um, a foreign passport with a completely different name. Um, I don't know how it's going to work as far as dealing with my wife and my children. I certainly don't want them moving to where I'm looking to go. But I, I, I and I don't think you, yourself, uh, the president of MSNBC, General Milley, um, you know, uh, Liz Cheney, how many people has he turned around and said that this is that these are people that I intend to go after if I have the ability to. And the worst is the Supreme Court's recent decision that gave him immunity, presidential immunity. Now he thinks it's not only is it I can do whatever I want, but I can't even be prosecuted to get out of jail free card solely for the president. So you're out of here. You'd leave the country. I have no choice. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I got to tell you guys. One of the easiest ways to tell whether or not Trump is winning the election race at this point is how deranged the commentary is on MSNBC. The more deranged the commentary is against Trump, uh, the more likely it is that he is winning. OK, and you would think that MSNBC, the network that spent the last three to four years uh, being Trump deranged 24-7, you would think that there would be a certain level of derangement in which they would just be maxed out, right? They cannot be more deranged than they've been over the last three to four years. However, that's just certainly not the case, okay? They're upping the ante here, okay? And they're taking their derangement to a whole new level by basically declaring that Trump is preparing for civil war, right? This is now what they're saying on MSNBC, Trump wants a civil war. And the reason why they're saying this is because Trump is telling the truth about Democrat rhetoric and the political violence that it has led to in this country. And they hate when Trump says this out loud because it is true, right? It is an undisputable fact that the last assassination attempt against the former president was inspired by the same language, the same type of rhetoric that Democrats use the MSNBC uses that a vast majority of the liberal media uses on a daily basis against Trump, right? And that really hurts them when the truth is said out loud because that means that they are accountable and responsible for the political violence in this country. These people pretend as if they hold no responsibility whatsoever for the political violence that happens in this country, although we have seen most of the political violence in this country come from the left, come from people who have the same ideology as MSNBC and the Democrat Party, right? So without further ado, I want to react to Joe Scarborough having a full-blown meltdown over uh, the last Trump rally at Butler, in which, again, they talk about how Democrat rhetoric has led to political violence against the former president in this country. So without further ado, let's get into it. Saturday returned to the site of the first assassination attempt against him. Now, during that rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, he and his allies accused Democrats of trying to kill him. Over the past eight years, those who want to stop us from achieving this future have slandered me, impeached me, indicted me, tried to throw me off the ballot. And who knows, maybe even tried to kill me. You know, I always say there's an enemy from within and there's an outside enemy. And if you're smart, the outside enemy is not going to be a problem. Russia, China, North Korea, we're not going to have a problem if you have a smart president. If you have, if you have not such a smart president, then it's a problem. But we have an enemy from within, which I think is much more dangerous than the outside enemy. First, they try to silence him. When that didn't work, they tried to bankrupt him. When that didn't work, they tried to jail him. And with all the hatred they have spewed at President Trump, it was only a matter of time before somebody tried to kill him. And then, guys, they tried to kill him. They tried to kill him. 
And it's because the Democratic Party, they can't do anything right. They can't do anything right. You see it this week in the FEMA response in North Carolina, and in Georgia, and in South Carolina, and in Florida. This is a pivotal moment for our country. And I don't even have to tell anybody that here, we can all feel it. This is no longer a fight between Republican versus Democrat, left versus right. It is good versus evil. And good is going to win this battle, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand before they get into their deranged commentary here. Um, Michael Cohen just went on MSNBC and talked about how Trump is going to use SEAL Team 6 to round up people, right? They talk about how Trump wants to execute his political opponents. They talk about how Trump wants to burn up the Constitution. They talk about how Trump is Hitler. Now, what did Hitler do? Okay, Hitler killed millions of Jews, right? Saying that Trump is Hitler, comparing him to Hitler, puts into the minds of people that this guy is a mass murderer, right? That, that's what they're saying. But they've never had a problem when Democrats say that Trump is going to kill his political opponents, right? This is what they've been saying. They think that's totally fine. They think that's totally okay. That should be totally in bounds. But when Trump and his family come out and tell the truth about what likely inspired the assassination attempts against them, oh, well, that's too far, right? Oh, well, we're triggered by that. You can't say that. You can't say that Democrats may have inspired somebody to try to assassinate the former president. But you guys keep talking about how Trump wants to kill people. And you don't think that that's a problem? You don't think that that's an issue? Right? So I, I want you guys to understand the hypocrisy from these individuals. When Trump says, hey, these people and their rhetoric have inspired lunatics to try to kill me, that's out of bounds. But when Michael Cohen and MSNBC say that, well, Trump is trying to kill people, right? Trump is trying to assassinate his political opponents. OK, basically, again, saying that, again, Trump is trying to, to kill people. Right. Oh, well, that's totally fine. Totally OK. Nothing wrong with that. The, 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 the level of un-American activity that, that, that you just saw is stunning. That is un-American. They know they're lying. Donald Trump knows that's a lie. No, you know you're guilty. You're guilty. See, this is why these people get so triggered because they know deep down, they're like, damn, yeah, he's right. 100%. They know it. This this is all cope right here. Right? This is nothing but cope. That's what it is. That's what it is. He, he will tell you that the Secret Service, he thought, did the best job they could do. The fact that J.D. Vance... Oof. And Trump's family would out and out say what they said takes the threat of violence, takes the threat uh, beyond where it was even leading up to January the 6th. This is an increasingly desperate person, an increasingly desperate family. Who's preparing for civil war? They just are. Talking about uh, they're, they're trying to kill him. Democrats are trying to kill him. Um, this is it. And the lies. Th think about this. I, I, I saw part of Donald Trump's speech this weekend. It was remarkable, the lies. Not, not, not just on things this year, but even on policy. It just make up things. And just throw it out there. And I, I, I'd be shocked if the audience was really that stupid to believe the crazy lies that he was throwing out there. But he does it so much. It is it is the the falsehood, the firehood of falsehoods. You know, it's funny because I could literally say the exact same thing about MSNBC. I can't believe the audience is so dumb <laughs> as to believe anything that's said on this network. In fact, you had the MSNBC producer come out and expose MSNBC and say that, yeah, they're making their viewers dumber, right? So I can't say for certain that 
MSNBC and their viewers are so dumb <laughs> that they believe commentary like this. Again, we have evidence and proof that the last assassin was inspired by Democrat Party rhetoric or the same rhetoric that the Democrats use. This is an undisputable fact, but they're just ignoring it. They're, they're pretending as if that's not out there, right? Because again, they feel guilty. They know for a fact. This is why it hurts them so bad. This is why they're so triggered by this, right? They want Trump to shut up about it because they know what he's saying is true. If what he's saying was not true, they wouldn't care, right? They wouldn't care. But because there's elements of truth to it, this is what makes them feel like they need to speak out against it in the way that they're doing right now. This is why they're having full-blown meltdowns over it, right? Because they don't like to hear the truth. The truth hurt. And the truth is that the Democrat Party has a violence problem. They do. They do. And you know how you know this? Because the closer we get to the election, guess what you're going to see in liberal cities? You're going to see businesses boarding up. You're going to see signs saying, hey, I'm not a Trump supporter, right? I support BLM, right? I support the woke thing. Please don't damage my business. Not just in case Kamala wins, right? They're not preparing for violent Trump supporters. No, they're going to be preparing for violent Democrats and progressives that are going to lose their minds if Trump wins. We all know this. We all know this. This is what happens. So, again, when you're the party where anytime you have a convention or some large gathering, businesses are boarding up, they're preparing for violence, you have a violence problem. And Democrats just refuse to acknowledge it, even though it is clearly obvious. But they want to lecture all the other half of the country about how their rhetoric is dangerous and how we have a violence problem and Trump support is bad and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it's like... Well, every single time you guys have anticipated violence from Trump supporters, it, it hasn't happened, right? It hasn't happened. I'm, I'm just not saying where the violence is coming from, from, from Trump supporters, but I'm saying a lot of violence from the left and, and they're lunatics. But... They continue lying about 2020. Vance continues lying about 2020. Trump continues lying about 2020. Senators will not say on Sunday news shows that Donald Trump lost in 2020, despite the fact Republican officials in every one of those states that mattered said that, yes, in fact, Donald Trump lost. Brian Kemp said it in Georgia. Republican officials said it in Michigan. Republican officials said it in Pennsylvania. They said it in Arizona. They have said it repeatedly. Trump and Vance lying about. Yeah, so another sign of who's actually desperate in this situation going into the election is these people continue to talk about 2020, right? 2020 and what people think about the 2020 election is irrelevant for so many different reasons, okay? Because First and foremost, again, if you're so worried about Trump not accepting the outcome of the election, again, in 2024, doesn't really matter for multiple reasons. If he loses, he's not in power. The only thing that he can do is to legally challenge the election, and that's it, right? There's nothing that he can do, right, if he loses. Now, if he wins, he's not up for re-election. So it's not like there's another election for him to try to win in which he's in power, and then he can turn around and say, well, I didn't lose the election. I'm going to stay in power, yada, yada. No. None of that is there. Like, it's, it's not relevant. These people continuing to boohoo whine and cry about the 2020 election. Again, this is what you do when you don't have anything, right? When you can't come out here and to talk about Kamala Harris and her policies and how great they are and how great her record is and why people should vote for her. This is what you do. The only thing they can talk about is why they should vote against Trump. But they can't do a whole program. Like, I dare, Morning Joe, do a whole program on why people should vote for Kamala Harris without mentioning Trump. They can't do it, right? I guarantee you, they cannot do it. They are incapable of doing a program in which they can tell their audience why Kamala Harris should be president without talking about Trump. They just can't. So again, this is why they have to rehash 2020. This is why they have to boo whine and cry about Trump basically telling the truth about the Democrat Party and their rhetoric, 
right? Because they have nothing else. Nothing else has worked. So they're just doubling down on the Trump derangement. And the more that they do it, the more that you know that Trump is likely winning this race. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.